Rise and shine everyone! Let's proceed with the chapter 3 of the book Children of the City by Amadis Maria Guerrero. As the time for the release of the first edition near an air of expectation materialized outside the plant, the newspaper struck and Van stood in readiness. The newsboy grew in a number and began to form a dense mass. Their conversation began louder, more excited, and their horseplay rouser. Shortly after 11 p.m., a team of dispatcher emerged with the initial copies, the ink of the presses still warm on them and was greeted by yells of anticipation, a stampede follow, and Victor noted that for every bundle turned over to a newsboy, one distributed, jotted down on a piece of paper, the number of allotted to him. The clamor grew as the boys dashed out of the building and surged into the darkened street. There were like school children being let out for recess. The noise continued, then subsided after a few minutes. With the last urchin scampering away, the nighttime silence returned once more to the area, broken only by occasional shout of the men loading the main bulk of the provincial edition into the trucks. The toot of passing, motorists, horns, and the sound of laughter from the drinkers in the Sari Sari store in front. Victor settled himself on the pavement, and despite the hard ground, he felt tired and sleepy. He used his right arm as a pillow, and briefly about his father, his mother, and the man she had taken up with. Tio Pedrin, and the day's event before sleep claimed him. He awakened several hours later, jolted by the noise of the second wave of newsboys gathering for the city edition. Gingerly, he stretched his cramped arms and legs, peered about him and shivered, for it had grown much colder. He kept an eye out for Nasho, although he felt sure he would not come back anymore tonight. He could recognize though some of the faces in the crowd. The same procedure took place at 4 a.m. It was like a real being retaken. The routine was now familiar to Victor, but with difference. This time, he was a participant in the activities, and he found himself coughed up in the excitement. All weariness gone from him, sped away in the company of his colleges, holding on tightly to his ration of 15 copies. Exhilaration coursed through him, and he ran and ran, stopping only when he reached the avenida. The other had scattered in different direction, and the street stretched away endlessly, virtually devoid of traffic. Its stores had long closed down for the night, and only a few neon signs glowed. He began to walk slowly, sober now, his responsibilities heavy on him. His destination was blooming treat. As he crossed Azagaraga, a taxi slowed down and its passenger called out to him. Chambingly, he handed over a paper and received 15 sestavos in return. His very first sale, his spirit soared anew. Perhaps it wasn't so difficult after all to sell a newspaper. This impression was bolstered when in a matter of minute, he made the two more sales to customer at a small 
all night restaurant. It was still dark when he arrived at the district, and the first thing he heard was the whistle of the train which passed through the place every evening. He reacted in the same way he had the foghorn blast of the shifts along the boulevard. He set about reconnoitering the area to get the feel of it and took out the list Theo Pedrin had given him. He called his uncle's word. You're lucky that all newcomers have it. They begin and they have to return so many copies at first. The customer included a dressmaker, a barber, a small pharmacist, and a beautician. And to their places, Victor eventually made his way, slipping the newspapers under the doors into mailboxes and the apertures of padlock steel gates. Soon, it grew light and more jeepney began to ply their routes as buses appeared bound for Santa Cruz and Grace Park. The sign of activity in the neighborhood market increased while the small parish church near it remained closed, silent, and deserted. Young scavengers worn out from poking all night among a trash can slept inside their push carts Piles of garbage stood on several streets and alleyways. Victor made no other sales that day, and he returned to the plant with three unsold newspapers. He returned them over apologetically. The one in charge now shrugged, then noted that he had not that badly for the first night works. He added, that he expected Victor to improve in the future and equal the other newsboy who always complained that their allotment was not enough. The dispatcher said, Our newspaper is famous. By noon, we're all sold out in the newsstands. On his second night on the job, Victor was set upon by a group of street boys his age who sprang up from out of the shadows and began to beat him up. He managed to flee from the scene in terror, leaving behind all his newspapers. For this, he was roundly cursed by his uncle, who promised to take it out on his earnings for the next few days. He took to haunting his beat even during the daytime and became friends with the little people, the vendors, the sellers of peanut, calamansi, coconut, and pigs, the groceries employees, the market denizens, the modistas and shop owners, and even some of the patrol men. Through this constant presence in the area, he was able to find additional regular customers and no more did he have to return unsold copies at night he went about his task with renewed confidence and when true he would rest in front of the local bank gradually he lost his fears of thugs this is the end of chapter 3 are you all curious what will going to happen? See you at chapter 4. Thank you and have a nice day.